80 miles northwest of Phoenix, parked inside an airplane hangar in the Arizona desert, is one of James Bond's most memorable gadgets. It's called the Acrostar Minijet, a one-man, 300-mile-per-hour joyride machine that wowed audiences in the James Bond film Octopussy. Airshow pilot Bob Bishop and his wife Mary Ellen built the jet more than 25 years ago to be part of his stunt routine. Today, he puts the jet through its paces at the air park where he lives. We actually are in Arizona partly because we can fly almost 365 days a year. It's hot in the summertime, you sweat a lot, but in general we have very, very good weather. When he built the jet, he had no idea it would become famous for being piloted by Bond. The airplane's fully aerobatic, and we can do all types of loops and rolls, fly upside down. We even have maneuvers in air shows we do where we stop the airplane and back it up in the air. Just go straight up in the air like a world's largest lawn dart. You just throw it straight in the air, and it stops and flips over and comes back down again. You don't see a lot of jet airplanes doing that. Bishop and pilot Corky Fornoff perfected the maneuvers that would become part of movie-making history. The little airplane is a perfect match for James Bond. Because of its size, you could put it in a trailer. You could have actually dumped it out the back of an airplane and let it fly away. It's really James Bond material. He can land on a highway. He can put it in a garage to hide it. He can almost pull it out of his coat and put it together. The Bond producers had heard about the jet and wanted to develop a sequence for the opening of the film. Producer Cubby Broccoli wanted something spectacular, but didn't want anyone getting hurt. Cubby Broccoli told me one time, Corky, we aren't hiring you to kill yourself. We're hiring you to eliminate the risks and know that you can do it. Fornoff and Bishop came up with the idea of flying the jet through an airplane hangar to avoid being hit by a missile. As he flies through this hangar, hopefully the missile will attach itself to a larger aircraft. Mr. Bond flies through the hangar, the missile is attracted to a larger aircraft, there's one hell of an explosion, Bond comes out the other side and does a vertical roll. Classical James Bond. The amazing thing about the Acrojet was it was a real piece of equipment, but the Bond people had to do something special with it. It couldn't just be seen flying through the skies or what have you. So to shoot the sequence where it goes through the hangar and it's being chased by a missile, it was a case of taking something real and adding that Bond element to it. Okay, we're going to slow it back down, cut it back down. Now we're about a mile out. The Acrostar was so good at doing its stunts that one scene had to be cut from the film because it made test audiences too queasy. The scene had the jet disappearing from view down a cliff. The footage was great. The problem was, was when we showed it to the test audience and watched it in dailies, as Clay and I came across the top and I pushed away, it gave the appearance that the whole audience would be sucked into the screen. And when we first showed it, everybody went, <gasps> when we did it and uh, we thought it would stay in unfortunately they decided against it because it was a queasy feeling really it was an unusual illusion there are actually two Acrostar jets Bishop keeps one in his home in Arizona and the other the one that actually flew in the Bond film is kept at a flying museum in Los Angeles the jet on display no longer has its engine and no longer flies but Bishop's jet is fully operational and still wows audiences worldwide. People ask me if this is a toy or not, or actually people think it is not a real airplane. When they walk up to it, they say, where's the real one? They think this is a model of the airplane. And they realize it is a real airplane. The first question I hear usually is, well, who's the idiot that flies this? Or the midget, either one. And I have to raise my hand to both of those. <laughs> but I would say this is my work tool, quite frankly. This is the most fun I've ever had flying. The Acrostar jet has a wingspan of 17 feet. It's 12 feet long and weighs 430 pounds without any fuel in its tanks. A TRS-18 engine made by Micro Turbo powers the plane. 
the engine is 12 inches in diameter, 24 inches long, and produces 240 pounds of thrust. The plane can fly up to 325 miles per hour and can reach altitudes of up to 30,000 feet. It can fly for two hours before refueling. I would hate to fly anything smaller than this airplane. Most cars are longer than its wingspan is, and most engines and automobiles weigh more than this whole airplane together. When Bishop isn't flying the jet in air shows, he's been contracted by the U.S. military to use the plane for target practice. Because the Acrostar is so small and so fast, it's actually used by the military to double for a missile in war games with the Air Force. Though Bishop says the jet is extremely safe, he's had to bail out of the plane twice in the last 25 years, both times safely. Oh, I always wear a parachute. I'm, I'm crazy, not stupid. <laughs> there is a difference. So, yes. Though the plane was only featured once in a James Bond film, both Bishop and Fornoff say the notoriety of being associated with 007 and the Acrostar left an indelible impact on their lives and careers. Through my years of aviation and aviation film work, I have been given many compliments. But I think the one I treasure the most came from Cubby Broccoli. We were at a lunch meeting one day, and he introduced me to some friends from the Coast Guard. And he said, this is Corky Fornoff. He is James Bond's pilot.